things to green up your life. And this is a video request. Somebody said, why don't you talk about some things that you can do to help your environmental friendliness factor and your daily habits. Just clean them up a little bit. So I'm going to list hopefully five. I may go off the cuff and continue on as I'm doing this. I'm probably going to think of some more. But to start out with, you should use reusable bags. I've talked about this before. You go to the supermarket, you bring your own reusable canvas bag, and you can invest you know, in maybe three or four or five bags, and it's like a 15-year down the line long-term investment. It's not going to cost you very much, and you can use them over and over again, and it cuts out your plastic consumption. And also, you know, you look great, and you're setting a good example, and you don't have all that nasty lines in your hands when you're trying to carry, you know, like the claw, and it's getting all massacred, and ugh, you don't have those plastic difficulties you've got nice handles to carry so there's that number two would be use jars and this goes for maybe when you go get your coffee in the morning if that's something that you do if you're going to bring juice somewhere or water I like to use these to heat my ramen noodles and you know you can bring a jar with you in place of Tupperware if you go out to eat at a restaurant you can go ahead and like shove your leftover pasta or whatever it is in here and transport it home that way. And jars are just amazing. You reuse them so many times and it's basically free because you're just rinsing out an old pasta sauce or whatever it may be. I think this had applesauce at one point. So yes, biking instead of driving is number three. Anytime you have to go somewhere not too far away, consider walking, skateboarding, biking, rollerblading, you could unicycle, just take public transportation, anything to keep you out of the car. So that is something that I recommend highly. So we've got biking, reusable shopping bags, jars, and also cutlery. I like to bring a silver spoon with me. Or not silver, but you know, the color is silver. It's probably steel. Uh, go ahead and bring that places with you. It doesn't take up any space. It's virtually weightless, and that's awesome. Ah. <sighs> Fourth thing would be in the morning when you brush your teeth and at night, if you choose to do that, um, you turn off the water when you're brushing your teeth and you take shorter showers. It's not very hard and it's just, it's kind of overwhelming to think about how many people live in developed nations in this world who use so much water every day. It's gallons of water to sustain ourselves and some of it's more necessary like hydrating ourselves. Others just us wanting to be hyper clean and no more germs and you know I got home from work I'd like to take a 20 minute shower. I try not to live that way. I think I shower three to four times a week and that's only when I feel like I'm really you know pushing it. And that would be if I exercise or I just something really grimy happened at work with the baby or something. But your hair and your skin actually prefer washing every other day. They like to take a little rest. They don't want all of their natural oils stripped away. And you're going to have fiasco dried out everything if you continually, you know, wash it all the time. So less water consumption. When you're brushing your teeth, turn the faucet off. You know, 80% of the time you're not using the water. It should go off during those times, okay? So I always do that. And a um, quick fitness tip, while you're brushing your teeth, if you are able to multitask, do some squats in the bathroom and it's good for you. And, you know, it's just a good way to get a little bit of movement in there. And finally, I would say the fifth tip would be go vegan. We spend so much resource on enslaving and torturing these animals. It's most of this country's antibiotics go to livestock. We spend billions and trillions of gallons of water every month on them. And the same goes for food. All this grain that we're feeding to them could be going to people. And all this deforestation, we could be leaving the Amazon alone if we weren't using it for our McDonald's cattle. So consider going vegetarian, meatless Monday at the very least. Work your way. It can be gradual. You can do as much as you feel comfortable with. But just baby steps, make the changes. And the vegan lifestyle is honestly, especially raw vegan, I know that that's the most extreme. Here's a good point, though. I find that when I really challenge myself, it feels much easier to take a step back. So you take a leap forward, and then when you come back and settle, like if you don't think that you could be vegetarian, try being vegan. Try it for a day. 
okay? Once you've done that, once you've tried vegan for a week, vegetarian will seem like such a breeze because when you cut out most things and you really have to be conscious of it, coming back and settling at like a less extreme feels so easy in comparison. So I recommend that. If you think that something is too much, like I was struggling for a while thinking like, oh, being vegan is, you know, it's something that's true to my ethics, but it's, you know, it's maybe monotonous at certain points. Then I tried going raw vegan, mixed it up, and I was desperate to come back to vegan. It's so easy. Once you go to the, you know, polar crazy extreme where you've cut out so much and you really have to think about every little step of your day, you know, just falling in the middle in the center is much more appreciated. So those are my five steps. If you can think of some good ones. I'd love to hear them. Just try to consume less. Buy clothes at the thrift store. Think about whether or not you really need stuff and reuse, recycle, upcycle, you know, it's in your power and I'm sure that you're creative enough to come up with your own ways. I'd love to hear them. Comment below. Love you guys and I will talk to you very, very soon.